just out of ring to round sparring Bobby Flood, young Bobby Flood, yeah. national Lethal. champion under 18, European under 18 champion. You know, I hate sparring amateurs, it's a completely <laughs> different sport. I don't see no bar from runners training with sprinters. Fuck sake or poodle players playing, playing with fucking sticker players. <laughs> but uh, no, he's class. How good is he? Yeah. He's very fucking tight now, very good, very good at keeping the distance. Yeah. Um, and he obviously high pace for because he's an amateur. Yeah. He'll be high pace. But uh, no, I enjoy sparring Bobby, he's always a good spar. Um, just ready for feeds. I sparred him last camp as well, and it's always it's good. It's good if both of us progress. And I mean, he's going to Worlds next week. Yeah. So hopefully he does the business, brings home gold. I think he's capable of bringing home gold. Definitely. Do you think, um, obviously there's, be like there's benefits for him specifically of sparring the likes of you, but there's benefits for you to spar someone like him, because not only is he an amateur and a very technical amateur, but like he's a very good technical amateur, if you know what I mean, like he's a very high level amateur, so what do you take from a spar with the likes of Bobby Flood there, like what are you uh, learning from that spar? Because he's an amateur, I like to do a high pace, everyone knows I'm a high pace fighter. And uh, two seconds. Here, St Tony, put that down a bit. There is fuck. Because he's a, an amateur, and so he's always high pace, and I'm a high pace fighter. So it's good to, to test the fitness with someone who is has that amateur style where it is very high pace. And, and, uh, as I, as I say, he's very technical, gift, technically gifted, and he's, he's very good at keeping the distance and keeping yeah. range. So you have to, you have to be accurate and, and not make stupid snakes or makes you pay for it. So yeah. um, keeps you keeps you a bit strong, keeps you smart. Yeah. Um, I don't think much professional boxers. I mean, Liam Taylor wouldn't say is uh, as technically gifted as him, as as sharp as him. And I mean, yeah. so as I said, he's world class. So there's a kind of force you to kind of be a bit more technical as well, like say to move your yeah, head more or to mind the distance a bit better, stuff like yeah. that? Yeah, I mean, as you know, I've done four rounds before I jumped in with him, so yeah. I, was, I was already, not that I was feeling the pace because I wasn't, but, uh, yeah. but you just, it's, it was two different spars and you got two different kind of fucking, you have to be switched on, yeah. go from one one spar which is kind of like in close, in close work and then and going into a guy that can keep the range very good, so if you, if you fall short, he's going to make you pay with uppercuts, yeah. hooks, uh, check hooks and stuff like that. So yeah, it's, it's a very good sport. Yeah, definitely. What do you think uh, Bobby gets out of this kind of spar with the likes of you? He gets to be in the ring with me. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> this is deadly shot, by the way. All the steam. Ah, Harvey, it's class. Fucking train hard, people. <laughs> but uh, no, you know what? He, he's, he obviously learned a lot. I mean, he's coming down here. He's sparring me, Sean McComb, Gary Cully, uh, Paul Ryan right now. Um, so he's getting good rounds in. I mean, I, I doubt he's getting better sparring than he would get in this, this gym. Um, and he gets a mix of different uh, styles. I mean, he was in with me, who's a come forward, he's throwing a lot of punches, and then he's in with Paul Ryan now, who's, who's kind of a counter puncher, a stylist. So yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, he's learning a lot. He wouldn't keep coming up if he wasn't learning. That's for sure. Yeah, he's obviously getting something out of it. Um, you're prepping for the name Taylor fight. Yeah. How, in general, is preparations going? Brilliant. Um, uh, did you see the last camp? I mean, it's truthful. There was a lot of things going on behind the scenes, and I wasn't happy with a lot of things. Okay. Not, not in this camp, but outside of boxing. Um, Can you uh, let us know anything? No, just just uh, personal things and uh. Okay, I don't want to have too much of your <laughs> personal life. Fuck's sake! As much as you want, <laughs> to, as much as you want to tell us. Nah, but like. There was just stuff going on behind the scenes. I was not happy in the camp, and I wasn't. My head was all. This was sitting, thinking, "Well, just fucking retire." I was, I was kind of throwing my head up. And wasn't, really? Wasn't, Retirement? I wasn't staying down here, and wasn't wasn't putting in the effort that I should have been putting in in, in the camp. Wow. And this camp, everything behind the scenes is resolved. I'm happy. I'm back down, staying down full time in Dublin. Good. Uh, the training sessions are unbelievable. Uh, sparring's great. I'm getting a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with Pete. Um, so yeah, man, this is a completely different uh, head specimen for this for this fight, and I, I just feel like I'm ready again. I'm ready again now, and I just fight Liam Taylor. I'm I'm buzzing for it. class. Um, a word on Gary Cully. No, last last week, killing. Uh, uh, Thirty-five seconds. I've been saying forever. Everyone that steps in the ring with, with Gary gets cullied. Especially if it's the first, say if it's the first time you've, you've jumped in the ring with Cully. I mean, it's all right if you've sparred him a hundred times, you start getting used to you his, know, his wee tricks. Uh, yeah. But for the first two months of sparring Cully myself, I was like, fuck me, what the fuck do you do this guy? Now I've kind of got used to him and it's good spar. But anyone that's fresh in and just jumped in with Gary Cully, 
you won't know what's happening and he's he's class, he's he's late and fast, he hits hard with a backhand, he's he's good at slipping, he's good at moving, he, he's kinda got it all and, and he's very professional, he's very dedicated, so everything that he's getting he deserves. Who at what point does he start encountering problems in your opinion? So like say name a fighter, like obviously the lightweight division is stacked, the, the absolutely stacked a bit. What fighters can pose him problems? How far does he have to go up the ladder until he starts finding problems? Oh, because he is very, very good. And as I say, when when you aren't used to him, it's hard to work him out. So, I don't so, know, I think he gives a lot of people trouble. A lot of people, I mean, I think it has to be the high caliber ones that are that are going to figure him out in a round or two. Because you do have to figure him out. You have to, and he's a hard man to, to work out. But uh, he's going to blow away most opponents yeah. until he gets to world, world level, like fucking pro grade levels, yeah, that yeah. kind of level. He's been mentioned in the same uh, vein as guys like Maxi Hughes, Jorge Linares, which actually could be a very good fight for him, especially like a real showcase fight against a big name. Um, George Cambosis, Eddie Hearn said to me last week, which would be, Fuck, that'd be a great fight. maybe not right away, but in say two or three I fights fancy time. Guy, I fancy guy against Cambosa. Yeah. Yeah. Would just he did, he did sell boxing. Yeah. I mean, Cambosa is a man who does a high work rate and come forward very that suits so guy all day. I mean, Guy Colley. I'm high pace, Gary Colley matches my pace every day of the week. He's high, high pace, fitter, he doesn't get tired, he trains very hard to not get tired. Um, he can throw punches all day, combinations, seven, eight, nine, ten punches, combinations, and not blow out his, his hole, so he, ha- he, ha- he has it all, he's dedicated. Definitely. You have a podcast. I'm a podcaster now. Challenging us in the media podcaster space. Podcaster first, story? boxer second. <laughs> Uh, how's, it and, how's it going? Whiskey and wait. Anyone who hasn't tuned in, tune in, subscribe, like and share. <laughs> I'm certainly like a podcaster now. Yeah. But, uh, we need to get you playing sharing this interview first. I know, I will, I will. <laughs> but uh, yeah, me and Tommy McCarthy, we've started a, a yeah. podcast. Obviously, he's in the com- comedy now, he's the, the comedian, so we said, you know what? We'll be, we started when we podcast, and we've always wanted to do it for over the years. And we finally got a place that, that, that could host it. And, and uh, shoot it and stuff, so why not? It's fun. Uh, I think it's getting good, good reception so far. Everyone's enjoying it, and Class. the guests have got on. With, we know a lot of people around Ireland that 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 are good for podcasts. Mm-hmm. They get on guests and stuff, and we're with relationships with them. So yeah. it's it's good, to, easy to get the high caliber guests on for us, um, which is which is always good if you're starting out as a podcaster. And Definitely, I'm loving it. I'm, I'm buzzing every every week. Comes out Wednesday at six o'clock, and it feels like a fading announcement or something when it comes <laughs> out. Like, yeah, I'm just texting. I was brilliant. So yeah, I'm loving it. That's classic. Whiskey man. and white people, get on it. Whiskey and white, get on to it. Get on the time, Cardi. I'm wait. He's whiskey. <laughs> Just didn't know. Brilliant. Tron, thanks very much, man. No worries. All the best for the preparations for Liam Taylor, and we will catch up hopefully soon.